Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Tutorial. Today we're going to get into orbit. Uh, before we do, I want to kind of talk about what orbit is like, just in case you don't really know very much about physics or orbital dynamics, that kind of stuff. Ooh, nighttime. Uh, I've loaded up one of my other files so we can kind of see what orbit is like here. Um, I have various flights going on in this game. Uh, including, I think I have something on, I have a couple things around the sun, I think I have something on Moho there, yeah. Regardless, um, this, let's, let's take a look at this one. So, it's as if you're moving to the side and you're constantly missing the Earth, right? You're still very much within the Earth's gravity, it's not, z it's not zero gravity. When you're on there, it feels like zero gravity because um, all the forces cancel out, but you're basically in a state of constant free fall. So what we want to do, we can't just like plant ourselves standing still like this. We have to move ourselves going to the side. And it's helpful that Kerbin doesn't have a tilt to its rotation at all, like Earth does. Earth tilts, that's why we have seasons. Um, Kerbin doesn't. So it makes it very easy for us to launch from the equator and we'll end up in a perfect orbit just around the middle there like you saw like a little hula hoop there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our main menu we're gonna go to that that one where we made the other rocket in the first video <clears throat> we're gonna go to our vehicle, vehicle assembly building and we gotta give this one a little bit more mustard than our first one so we'll put a Kerbal in it We'll zoom out a little bit. We're going to give him a parachute. He'll definitely want that because we want him to survive this. And one thing I am going to do is I'm going to put um, a decoupler right there. So if you remember, that lets us jettison everything else but this little piece right here. So that lets us come in for a nice safe landing. Um, another thing that I'm going to kind of show you all about here is this advanced inline stabilizer. We're gonna put that right there. That basically gives us more control with our with our stability control and things like that. We can kind of tilt more. Uh, we can do more pitch, roll, and yaw with that, which is just different kinds of tilts. Um, there's two more sizes. There's a really big one, as you can see. We're not gonna use that. There's a really teeny tiny one. We're not gonna use that. Um, but we're gonna use this this advanced inline stabilizer. But because we're doing that, um, we're gonna put a little bit more battery space on it. That's really small. We put a little bit more battery on it. Um, batteries are really heavy, but we need them to kind of run our our stabilizers there. And to be honest, with a flight this short, we might not need to, but I make a good habit of it because I, I like to have that security of knowing that I have a lot of um, a lot of electric power. Um, in addition to that, we're also going to toss in, these are photovoltaic panels. They're basically solar panels. And we can extend those when we're in space and retract them when we're in atmosphere so they don't burn off. They'll probably still burn off in entry, but that's fine. Um, so keep in mind, this is going to be jettisoned. These won't because they're not attached to a decoupler. But all this, this inline stabilizer, we won't need that on re-entry. We won't need these batteries on re-entry. So that can all go before uh, we come back in. Now let's get to the real meat of it here. And let's put... Uh, we'll give it one of these. Uh, that's pretty tall. We'll give it one of these fuel tanks. We're, not, we're just going to use this one for uh, re-entry. Because uh, we're, we're going to get to orbit and we're going to come back down. Um, so this is going to get rid of all that sideways velocity that we have and uh, it's going to pull us back down to earth and you'll see what I mean when we get up there. We also need an engine. So that's a fuel tank. These are the smaller size fuel tanks up here. Again, everything has generally three different sizes for rockets. This is the big old one. That's big, big. But uh, we're going to take this engine here. Um, we don't need anything super fuel efficient. This is the most fuel efficient for this um, style of rocket. Again, I don't expect you to know that now. Uh, just experiment. Experiment with everything. You can kind of see the statistics here. Uh, it doesn't get that you wouldn't know this, but it doesn't give a ton of thrust. But that uh, engine ISP, 
that stands for specific impulse, uh, and that is basically how efficient the the engine is, and that's a pretty good, um, it's a pretty good rating. See these, yeah, they're bigger, so they get more thrust, stuff like that. But regardless, we'll take that engine with us. Uh, we don't need payload. We need one more decoupler. We're gonna stick another one on there because we're gonna put another a second stage of rocket and this is the first time we're doing this. this is, we're building a two stage rocket here um, we might even go three stage we'll see how we feel but we want this adapter this is a 1.25 meter which is the size of these little guys here to a 2.5 meter which is the next step up so we're gonna get a bit more oomph in this next in this first stage here because we need a lot of fuel to get us into orbit and you can see over here uh, it kind of shows us how much delta V we're going to get which is basically how much you can change your speed <clears throat> now that seems like a bit of a uh, a weird way of putting it but it's basically how much uh, it's basically your fuel efficiency how far you'll get with the amount of gas in your car or the amount of ro f rocket fuel in our rocket in this case and uh, I I don't know why I really like uh, I really like these mainsails they got some good power on them and just for good measure uh, eh, yeah we'll go for it just because I like building big old rockets these here are radial decoupler decouplers you have three different kinds you have these short little sideways ones you can see like that you have these ones that stick out a lot from the rocket and you have these hydraulic detachment manifolds and those give a lot of uh, they basically explode stuff off the side of your rocket I like using those so we'll take that and we'll give a couple of boosters here just for good measure and boosters are basically just those one use rockets that we used in the first video they give it all they got and then they are discarded so we'll stick a couple on the side there now quick look at our staging basically we want to keep these three engines at the bottom here going at the same time just for stability and for consistency so we want those all in the same stage that's the first stage down here so we're gonna hit spacebar and those are all gonna fire off quite literally like a rocket now our second stage I know from experience that these are gonna burn out way before this huge amount of fuel so we want to detach those because they're, they're unnecessary weight. They're going to hold us back from getting into orbit. And then when we're in orbit, we'll want to detach that. And basically after that, we'll, it, it's, it's up to us. We can come back down. We can stay up there. I want to quickly check to see if there's any kind of nose cones that'll fit these. Oh, beautiful. They fit on there nice like that. A bit, bit more aerodynamic. They'll make it a bit uh, a bit better for us to gives us just a little bit more delta V I believe yeah, as you can see if you look over here on the side you can see our delta V goes up just a little bit oh. it goes down because of the weight whatever I like the way it looks it might not also calculate for aerodynamics I'm not 100% sure but <clears throat> now one other thing I want to touch on before we take off um, Kerbin spins uh, from from the direction we're looking at here it spins to the right so we're gonna want to take off in that direction because we're already moving in that direction it's gonna take a lot more fuel to, to take off to the left than it will to take off from the right just because we, you then have to cancel out Kerbin's rotation so basically what that looks like is from here it starts you off in this kind of view we're heading right it's pretty easy we're gonna turn on our stability assist and we're gonna hit spacebar you can see all three of our engines are going there we're gonna to wanna to get a little bit of altitude on this first I'm gonna throttle down actually a little bit on our main engine because these uh, these boosters are giving us some pretty good uh, get up and go and you can see uh, by the way you change the throttle with the shift and control keys um, you can see this surface meters per second here uh, you don't really want that to go above 200 uh, if you're below 10,000 meters is generally the efficiency that you, it'll give you the most efficient um, give you the most oomph but because you're moving through thicker atmosphere and uh, you see I hit spacebar there 
those boosters go, we don't need them anymore. You're moving through thicker atmosphere, and uh, oh no, this might be disaster. Uh, keep it under control, keep it under control. No, we're going to crash. Oh boy. Well then. You gotta be a little bit more patient with this than I sometimes am. So tell you what, we'll hit escape, we'll go revert flight, we can revert to launch. So here we are back in the assembly via, uh, the assembly building. Um, that was not working out for me. Every time I detached these uh, solid fuel boosters, these thumpers here, um, I would lose complete control of it. So what we're gonna do, we have a couple of options here. There is some fuel in this adapter here, but honestly, we don't need it. So we're going to take one of these advanced reaction wheels here and we're going to put that there. That'll give us a little bit more control. Um, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some of these winglets here and we're going to put those on the bottom and basically what that does is it just gives us a teeny tiny little bit of drag that keeps our butt facing down and keeps our nose pointing up. So we're going to try this again here. That should give us all we need. I'd given it a few... Ooh! Not the most structurally sound rocket I've ever made, but that's okay. Um, I've tried this a few times. It just seems to tip with every every launch. So we're going to give it one more go with this. And actually, I'm going to tip a little bit early because I think part of the problem is fighting against the air as I'm already moving up. <clears throat> Ooh, we are going quick. That's okay. I don't think we're going to go quick enough to have anything explode on us. So we're going to go a little bit this way. You can see some of those shock effects um, showing up. That's basically, we're breaking the sound barrier right now, which is not something you want to do in atmosphere generally if you're trying to conserve fuel. <clears throat> but we're not really trying to conserve fuel here. There it goes. Whoa! Boom. That was cool. Doesn't happen all the time. We're going to keep going this way. It's already going a lot better than it has been. I think these fins are really helping out. And I think uh, the stabilizer is keeping us a lot more centered and true to where we're trying to get to. Um, at this point, we can really go as fast as we want. We're almost at 30 me uh, 30,000 meters, 30 kilometers, which the atmosphere really doesn't matter at this point. So let's start tipping off a little bit more this way. Again, we're trying to get our horizontal speed, our velocity from west to east. We're trying to get that up uh, to, I think, about 2,600 meters per second. And it's showing 1,500 there. You might feel like we're almost there. We're not quite almost there because um, we are still moving up at a pretty good rate as well. So that counts toward our speed reading here, but it doesn't count towards how we're keeping in orbit. So we'll take a look at our map here. That is a high trajectory. Wow, that is way higher than it needed to be. We're using a lot of fuel to get up really high. That's okay. So we're gonna wait until we're out of atmosphere here, which we actually already are because we're going at such a steep trajectory here. And we're gonna set this this here. You can click on our orbit which I know it doesn't look like an orbit because it goes back into Kerbin. This is where we'll land. Um, but it is technically an orbit, just not one that stays outside of the planet. We're going to add a maneuver. And this is basically, you'll see these markers all along the side here. This is prograde, which is the direction that you'll be heading at that point. This is retrograde, the opposite of that. This is, I don't remember exactly what they... okay normal and anti-normal basically they're always up and down and then this is radial in and radial out and that's basically just more towards the object that you're orbiting and more away from the object that you're orbiting and what we're gonna do is all we need to do to get to orbit is once we're at apoapsis which is the highest point of our orbit we need to burn prograde quite a bit because our trajectory is so steep and you can see a little periapse thing. That is, that is an orbit. It will decay because uh, our lowest point is back inside the atmosphere. So we'll slowly lose velocity until we fall into the Earth or into Kerbin. 
but we can just give it a little bit more. I'm kind of trying to make it even. You see, as it kind of flips, they trade, it becomes more and more circular. So this is 204,000, this is 201,000. That's really as circular as we need for really anything, but better than better than perfect for our for our purposes right now. I'm going to hit this maneuver uh, node here. It centers us to the direction that we need to head in order to do the maneuver that we just made here. And this timer, you can see a little timer down at the bottom right of our of our little ball indicator. Uh, it's counting down node in T minus 3 minutes 18 seconds. Estimated burn 7 seconds. So that estimated burn of 7 seconds, we want that to actually be centered on T, which is the time of our maneuver. So we want to burn about three and a half seconds before and three and a half seconds after to keep it as even as possible. Generally, doesn't matter too much. And before we forget, we're gonna do this so we have enough energy to power our stability assist. Look at that, so pretty. It's so pretty. And they automatically turn to face the sun as well, which is somewhere. There he is. They turn to face the sun at best efficiency and you can see our electricity is right at the top there. <clears throat> so two and a half minutes until our burn. We can go ahead and time warp that. We don't want to go too fast because I cannot tell you how many times I have time warped past my maneuver. And you can see our orbit our velocity is going down here because we're slowing down uh, as we reach the top of our as we reach um, apoapsis. So as we reach our burn we're gonna burn a little bit before and a little bit after and uh, you can use the X and Z keys to uh, go maximum thrust and then completely cut off thrust and you can see I, I kinda messed it up a little bit but 202, 207, that's a solid circular orbit. And you can see, beautiful. And if we want a time warp, we can see ourselves slowly going around Kerbin. So beautiful. Now, we want to go back down to Kerbin. And we want to land preferably in the water, preferably during the day. And just during the day, just so that you can see it in a video. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Um, this is going to show us landing probably on land, but the atmosphere will slow us down enough that we'll probably land somewhere, somewhere probably halfway between, I guess, what would be Africa there in Earth terms and the Philippines. I don't know if that's what those are supposed to be, but I'll call them that. Anyway, so we have this node here. We have it uh, made, and we can actually warp right to our node. And I'm actually going to take a quick second to cancel that because I did not face towards our maneuver direction, <clears throat> which we are definitely going to want to do. And you'll see as we come closer to our maneuver, this retrograde marker will line up right with our maneuver marker. Look at that, because we are going to be burning pure retrograde. Oh, slow it down. That's okay. <clears throat> We're going to be burning pure retrograde just to burn off our velocity. And you know what? Before we do that, I want to use this other rocket that we put on here. We really didn't need that much fuel. We'll kick it out of there just with a bit of thrust from our rocket. We really didn't need as much fuel as we brought with us. So. Um, again, I tend to over-engineer these things so that they have a ton of fuel, but we didn't need it. So we'll just jettison that, just because I wanted to use this other rocket that we packed along with us. We brought it with, we might as well, right? Um, I'll give it a quick burn just to reset our estimated burn here, which is 18 seconds. And So we're going to burn it about 9 seconds. Sometimes the timer's a bit off, so I usually give it an extra second or two. I'll burn at maybe eight seconds or seven and a half. So we'll burn now. Doesn't really matter. We're just landing anywhere on the surface of the planet. So you can see 
as our time goes down here, or our meters per second goes down here, that's the amount of delta V that we will need to complete it, to complete our maneuver. And boom, just like that, we're good to go. And let's take a look at our map. We are set to come down, oh, way over there, huh? Yeah, well, let's give it an... I don't want to land on land, so I'm going to quickly burn a little bit more just to hopefully get us that should be good if I put it right at the edge of the land here we should land somewhere in the in the ocean beside it so we'll get away from our map you see we've burned off a lot of velocity here that'll take us right back down to Kerbin and we're gonna quickly jettison this and we're gonna try and keep these just for fun we're gonna see if we can whoops Oh, did they not come back in? Why won't they come back in? Am I time warping? I don't know why they don't want to come back in. Well, we're going to lose those for sure. Um, but we're quickly going to point ourselves retrograde. We're going to time warp a little bit till we're back in atmosphere. It'll automatically poke us retrograde again. And here we go. We are about to re-enter and that is your first orbit obviously if you have any questions post them in the comments I am free to answer them I know definitely enough about Kerbal Space Program and orbital dynamics to be able to oh no those are the temperature readings on our solar panels they're about to go bye bye um, I definitely know enough to answer any of the questions that you'd have at this point and boom there they go. <laughs> Just rock us. But it's okay. We didn't need them anyways. Oh! Our cabin's heating up quite a bit. Come on. Survive! I didn't think we were rocketing in at quite that lethal of a speed. I think we're going to be okay. I think, I think, I think we're going to be okay. If you want, you yeah, we're going to be fine. If you want, you can always put some extra she heat shielding on the bottom of your on the bottom of your cab which works quite well yeah we're gonna land perfectly right in the ocean here you can see right there and it's still coming down because we're losing a lot of speed still you can always put some extra heat shielding on that'll protect your cabin um, it's up to you 99% uh, of the time you won't need it but that 1% of the time might get you I thought it was gonna get me here but we're okay here we go again I usually wait a little bit before deploying my parachute just because it takes forever to get down so we'll, we'll draw it at about 5,000 meters and pull beautiful and that'll fully deploy at about 500 meters but it's still slowing us down a little bit as you can see our surface velocity there we're slowing down quite a bit fifteen hundred still slowing down and five hundred meters it is fully deployed and you can see that brings our surface velocity way way down so we're going to time warp this Da, 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 da. Tell a story to your friend while you wait for your capsule to land. And we'll turn off time warp just before the ground because I've heard that sometimes that can glitch and cause your capsule to blow up, but never happened to me, but I still like to do it just in case. And there you have it an orbit and a re entry. And just like that, we hit recover our vessel. And I think that was Jeb. I think that was Jeb in our capsule there. Look at that. Ready for next assignment. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Brady's brother, Riley. You guys have a good one.